So in this video, what I'm going to do is show you how you can access peer-reviewed sources. Uh, and this is going to happen through the Daytona State's uh, library's website. So here we are, and I've already started this out, uh, at the Daytona's main page. This is daytonastatecollege.edu. It's going to take you right here. And if you take a look down here at the bottom right, we can head to library. Uh, and this is going to take us into the library services. However, this is not actually where you're going to search for books and whatnot. If you click on find an e a book, ebook, or article, this is going to take us to the actual main landing page uh, for the library. And this is where the database is. This is where you can get all the good stuff. <clears throat> now, normally, you're probably used to maybe coming here and you type in information here. You know, politics, for instance. But this is not actually what we want to do. Instead, I have already given you some journals to take a look at. Um, so head over to journals A to Z. And now we can search and take a look at specific journals. So we're not searching everything. We'll be looking for some specific journals. So let's do the very first one on the handout. Let's do the American Political Science Review. And even here, it's popping up. It recognizes us. So let's take a click. <clears throat> and here it is, the American Political Science Review. Now, for every journal, there's actually usually going to be a number of what we call databases uh, that have access to that journal. Now, if you have the opportunity, my suggestion is to always use JSTOR when you can. It's one of the most robust and easy to use. And as a matter of fact, we have uh, that availability, so let's go ahead and use JSTOR for full text online access. Now, normally, you're not going to come straight to this, uh, this screen. Instead, you're going to get a little question to input your credentials. And it's going to ask for, your, uh, for a username and a password. Your username is going to be your student ID. And your password is going to be the last four digits of your social security number. Once you put that in, you won't have to keep putting it in on that computer, at least for that session. And then it's going to pop up like you see right here. And here we are. We're in JSTOR. And we're taking a look at the American Political Science Review, uh, which is published uh, by the American Political Science Association, which is why it's saying ah, APSA right here. Now, you can, just like you can with any print journal, you'll notice there's volumes and issues, just like with, say, People Magazine or anything else. Uh, starting most recently, we just have 2013. Um, but it goes all the way back until the 1900s, as you can see here. And you could, as a matter of fact, uh, browse through any of these uh, issues. And here's exactly what's in that issue. There's the table of contents. There's the people. Now, the problem with that is, is that would take you, well, pretty much from now to the end of mankind to find what you're looking for. But what we can do is notice up here at the top where it says in this title, we can actually search for things inside of one specific journal at a time. So starting in the American Political Science Review, let's say my topic was something like campaigns. Now, what I'm doing is I'm searching just in the American Political Science Review, a peer-reviewed journal that I've already told you to have access to. And now you can take a look and say, oh, look, here's some articles. Uh, and you know, maybe this third one here deals with uh, my issue. Do negative campaigns mobilize or suppress voter turnout? Let's click on that guy. Every single uh, peer-reviewed work is going to have what we call an abstract right here. And this is the authors themselves summing up what it is that their article, their work, does so that you can know, does this deal with my topic or not? When you find an article that you think is something you should be reading, or going to be summarizing in your annotated bibliography, download that guy as a PDF. And you're going to click here. It's going to take us just a moment because it's got to think about this. <clears throat> and then here we are. Our PDF is popping up and it's loading it. This is a pretty, a pretty big one. It's going to take it a minute to get all the way here. And, and it's going to typically pop it in your browser first. You can also, by clicking on this button, or if you're in Windows, uh, you're going to end up uh, going up to the top and saying File, Save As. Um, you can save it to your hard disk, which I suggest. I've done this already. Take a look at my downloads. And here is this PDF of the article. Uh, and now I can do things like, well, you should be reading it, taking notes on it, etc. I suggest that you, as you've noticed I have, name each of your uh, PDFs by the first, or excuse me, the last names of each of the authors and the title of the paper in question. And this way it's going to make your life a whole lot easier when you go back 
say, oh, wait, where was that article? Save all these guys in one location. That is how you are going to find peer-reviewed journal articles.